Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, Mindset Elevation Coach, Intentional Living Guide, and creator of Aspire Magazine, the premier inspirational digital publication for women since 2006. And you can get your free subscription at subscribe to aspire.com. Today, we are going to be talking about mm, the magnetic energy of the law of attraction. We're going to talk about how to entice the law of attraction to work for you and not against you. I have a very special guest today. She's a soul sister, a friend. I love the work she's doing in the world. And her name is Karen Shire. She's a midlife transformation guide, desire factor in law of attraction, life coach, energy master, and author that guides women in releasing what no longer lights them up so they can joyfully thrive in the second half of their life. And I don't know about you, but that's what we I desire, as well as many of my friends in um, community. She is so passionate about supporting women in moving from feeling stuck, stressed, and unhappy to feeling free, empowered, and ready to co-create a magical, marvelous life. Welcome, Karen. Oh, thank you, Linda. I'm so honored and excited to be here with you today. Well, you know, you and I have had so many um, beautiful talks about this topic because you and I both believe in the same philosophies. We know the power of it. So one of my questions I always love to ask guests is what led you to really dive into law of attraction work? I know mine was a personal journey of, hey, this other way isn't working for me. Was there a transitional moment for you that you were attracted to this work? You know, there was. I Well, there were lots of, through my life, I mm -hmm. guess. There, there were quite a few transitional moments, but it really culminated a few years ago when, um, you know, I get these little intuitive hits all my, all my life on, you, sh you should do this, right? This is what makes your heart happy. But I dig in and I just, you know, I'd work as a single mom, you know, you just, you just push through life, right? And it kind of culminated into my health. I started having some pretty serious health issues and um, got to the point where I had a couple of surgeries and things. And it was, it became really just apparent of you've got to do something different and you've got to do something different now. And that's when I went on my journey of, okay, what is it? What, what makes my heart sing? What is it that I want to do? And, um, you know, we all know what we don't want to do. It's, it's that trick of kind of transitioning into what is it, what is it that you really want to do? And I think for me, there was a number of things, but the, the main catalyst was when I started really having some physical issues in my body that said, you know what, I don't want anyone else to go through this. Um, at the time I was working in a job where I had a staff of, of about 11 women and I could see them, they were all younger than me and I could see them kind of going down the same path I was, you know, we put everybody else first and we take care of the kids and we take care of the partner and we take care of the job and we take care of everything else and we don't self-care. And mm -hmm. so I just, I saw that happening and I'm going, what can I do? What can I do about this? How can I help other women? not go down the same path I am and come to this realization sooner in life. And so I knew about law of attraction, you know, I'd kind of, kind of dabbled in it for years and uh, the other universal laws and things, and then um, started researching when I decided that, you know what, I need to leave this job and do something different. I needed to follow my heart. I did some research and just kind of figured out, found the, found the right path for me and that's the path I've been on ever since. It's been a really great journey. 
Well, I'm so happy you stepped on that path because it led us to each other, right? Um, and there's no accidents. And there's something that you said that really speaks to me. And like internally, um, even though I've never used the words, it's how I felt. It's what you said when you said about following your joy, what makes you happy? We as women become so disconnected from that from childhood. It's like, be the good girl, do this, do that, follow the success path. Um, be the perfect employee and we'll last on our to-do list that we forget what joy even feels like so as you as you started to honor that truth and and do what brings you joy you started using the law of attraction principles so I think the first question I really want to start with is so many people think law of attraction is new age magic woo woo, right? And I laugh because I used to be one of them like 25, 30 years ago when I first heard about it. I'm like, what? How do you counteract that? Because you and I know the power of it, but I, I was where they are, as I'm sure you were at one time. Oh, how yeah. Do speak, how do you speak to the ones that are like, what is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the best example I love, well, law of attraction has been around since the beginning of time. And um, you do, you run into people who are going, yeah, I don't know about that. But but really, it's, it's, it's just as real as the law of gravity, right? We can't see gravity. But I'll date myself here when I say, you know, you know, gravity exists when you're roller skating and you fall on your bum. And it's, Pain, you become painfully aware that gravity's happening to you, right? In those moments, right? So law of attraction is much the same way. Uh, let's let's talk about an example. For so I'm thinking about someone I haven't thought about in a long time, and all of a sudden I receive an email from that person or I receive a call from that person. That's not coincidence. That's really law of attraction working for you, and it's. It, it works in a lot of positive ways, subtle ways. You may not realize that it's working, but um, think about too, you know, the, the woman that attracts the same bad relationship over and over and over again. That's law of attraction and action as well. She's attracting that person that's a, a energetic match for what she's energetically vibrating at that time in her life. So, Law of attraction is, you know, I like to, I liken it to a boomerang. It's, it's the energies that we put out come back to us. So the energies of our thoughts and our, the, the words we say and the mental pictures we have, those things in our mind are the frequencies that we're vibrating at. And those are the frequencies that we put out. And at the same time, we're going to draw those frequencies right back to us kind of good, bad, or ugly. So it's it's really important to learn about the law of attraction and learn how to use it to our advantage and and to to pull in our joy and pull in our bliss and learn how to um, raise our energetic vibration and, you know, be able to call into us the things that we want in our lives. And so true. And what I love is for me, when I first, when I got over the pot that it was woo, right? I can remember saying, okay, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try some of the principles and I made it a game, right? Like mm -hmm. I kept saying, okay, where's my energy right now? You know, like knowing where I was on that vibrational scale was like a critical point for me because I was so disconnected from myself way back then. So your emotions are always telling you where your vibration is, right? Because if you're resentful, angry, frustrated, then you know you're further down is that how you guide your clients to Kevin is tap into where they're feeling because that says where your vibration is is would is that resonate with you too oh, oh absolutely absolutely that's that's kind of where i start is is talking about where am i currently what am i feeling you know there's there's lower level vibrations we kind of group them all into this group category called black and these are, we know we're in lack when, when we don't feel good, you know, things like uh, loneliness and boredom and grief and worry and fear and anger. I was angry for a lot of years and I had to learn how to work through that. Um, those are all lower level vibrations. And, and we know 
what we want to do is we want to move from that state of lack, those lower level vibrations, whatever they are for us in that moment, to higher level vibrations. And higher level vibrations would be, you know, the things we all kind of want to aspire to feel more often and love and joy and bliss and abundance and, um, you know, excitement and optimism and contentment and confidence. That's where we, I would say that we as humans really want to aspire to live in. We want to live in that world as often as we can. And so that's where I start with my clients is let's, let's find out what you're feeling right now. And the important thing about this is to realize that no emotion or feeling is bad. You know, society likes to say it's a bad thing. You know, little girls sh shouldn't cry or little boys shouldn't cry. Little girls shouldn't show emotion, that kind of thing. We kind of got to break out of those, those mindsets and realize that whatever emotion we're feeling is never wrong. It's just information for us. It's information for us to notice and get curious about and then to learn how to shift. So that's kind of where I start when I, when I start with a client is let's see, let's see where you're at right now and let's see how we can make you feel better. And I love that. It's like non-judgment of our emotions, because if we judge it, then it's only going to get stuck in our body. So we're going to take our first break, Karen, and we'll be back in a moment, my friends. I want to invite you to visit Karen at karenshirecoaching.com and Shire is spelled S-H-I-E-R. And again, KarenShireCoaching.com. We'll be back in a moment, my friends, with more Law of Attraction, Elevating Your Vibe, and so much more. We'll be right back. Inspiration for a Woman's Soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Welcome back and listening to Inspire Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is Law of Attraction Life Coach, Karen Shire. So, Karen, I love that. And I like something else you said, too, and it was our emotions are just information. It's almost like the guideposts of where we are so we can make a new choice, right? Do we want to stay in the muck, knowing what we know about law of attraction, or do we want to take a conscious action? So I love that fact that you said, don't judge them. And it's mm -hmm. just information because so many times we go into the story of what we're feeling, which what happens, it magnetizes and magnifies it. Have you found that to be true yourself? Absolutely. You'll just call in more. You'll get more of what you don't want. So, you know, it's so important to focus on what is the feeling I want to feel? Where, where is it that I want to be and realize that you can start shifting and feeling that now uh, versus waiting until, you know, I'll, I'll feel really great when I get a new car or I'll feel really great when I get a new house or, or get to some achievement. It's, it's really important to understand that you need to find a way, you need to learn a way to feel those feelings right now. And law of attraction is going to work for you faster. Yeah. And I love that you brought that up because I think all of us at one time or another, I know I did, it was like, okay, when I get my first apartment, I'll be happy. When I get this, I'll be happy. So what was happening is I was giving all my power of happiness, joy, and a peace to an outside circumstance that I'm not in control of. And right. what, as I, you know, matured, spiritually matured, I realized, oh no, until I can own the vibration with, within me and be happy with what is, with who I am, with the life I have, that stuff will never find its way to me. And it was so empowering. And so I'm so glad that you said that for all of those who are listening. Um, as Karen said, if we're giving our power away, that happiness is when we do this. And isn't it funny, Karen? It, it, it's the word do. When I get this, when I do this, when I win an award. Um, and actually it's about being. So you want to speak to that about the being the energy of what we want to create instead of giving our power to an outside source. Yeah, yeah. And, 
what what just just kind of dropped into me was it just it's like this this constant chase when you feel like you're in this constant chase you know that you're coming from lack right and yeah. so being in the moment is learning how to, to it, it create those little moments in every moment create those little moments as often as you can every day learn to center learn to just be aware of your feelings and be happy and be reflective and be curious. And again, I, I think it just really goes back to don't let yourself fall into the trap of being judgmental about whatever it is you're feeling in that moment, because again, it's not wrong. It's just information. It's, you know, if I'm, I have a day where I'm going, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling a little sad today instead of beating myself up about it. It's, oh, I wonder where that's coming from. You know, did, did someone bushwhack me? Did they say something that, that upset me? And then realize that uh, it's just a human, it's a human response and it's okay. And then I, once I go through that process, I can shift my vibration. I can do something to clear that energy, clear that sadness, clear that anger, whatever it is I'm feeling and get to a better feeling space. Uh, because I always want to be very conscious of where I am, what I'm feeling in the moment and just be, be focused on that, be conscious of that. And if it doesn't feel good, know that you're in lack. It's as simple as that. And it's not easy, but it's simple. And then, you know, move yourself, do something, whatever it is for you that makes you feel a little bit better. And then do the next thing that makes you feel even a little bit better. For me, I love to just go take a walk around the neighborhood. I'm, I'm a big nature lover. So sitting and watching my birds and the bird feeders brings me a lot of joy. Looking at the lake, hugging a tree, whatever it is, focusing on those present moments, even if it's just for a couple of minutes, watching the little squirrels out my window. Um, taking that time for me every day is something that I never used to do. I, I would sit at my desk and work for hours and hours and hours and hours. And that only led to all the health issues that I had before. So being very conscious in the moment of, you know, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what your thoughts are, what your beliefs are and so forth is really um, just, it's, it's how we need to live in my opinion. Oh, I, I believe that too. And something else you had said about the emotions, like if I'm feeling sad or sometimes we get, I call it a glitch in my matrix, right? My energetic matrix. I'm like, I'm like, cause like maybe something didn't even happen. Just suddenly you feel off, right? You don't feel your, your normal vibrational self. And I just put my hand on my solar plexus and go, what's up, Lynn? And I ask my body what it needs. I ask my soul what it needs because I know, as you do, if I can acknowledge that yucky feeling, sadness, anger, bumpiness, <laughs> um, uh -huh. it 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 doesn't get as it doesn't get bigger. It's when it's ignored, which and I think you referred to this earlier. I think it gets magnified. So I like to talk to it, and what you said is acknowledge it, so that you know where you are in your in, on the energy scale. So I love the nature because you and we both have that in common, right? We both love our bird feeders and watching yeah. all the animals. I had a turkey out there this morning um, making that little noise at me like, hey, there's no <laughs> leftover bird seed on the ground. Get your ass out here. That's right. Um, yeah. So um, one of the, the other things you talk a lot about, we are always, we are always co-create in our lives, either by design or by default. So talk about that. What does that mean to you? Creating by default. You know, when we're not aware, when, when we're not consciously living our life, we're just naturally creating by default. And this can kind of make people feel a little, un, a little uncomfortable, I guess, when you think about it, because it's kind of a state that you're in where you're just kind of letting life happen to you. And life doesn't feel like it's flowing with ease and grace. Life feels hard. Uh, it's, it's, you're floating through life. Things are just happening. You're really not clear on your focus. You're not taking inspired actions. You're, you're taking 
maybe being more reactive to situations and you're leading your life through lackful emotions versus allowing, you know, searching for what it is that you want and being very clear in your focus on creating the life that you want through the, the words you say, through the decisions that you're making, through the actions that you're taking. So that that's a hard question. You know, one of the first questions I ask my clients is, are you creating by default? Are you letting life happen to you? Or are you taking the bull by the horns and creating the life that you want? And I, and I love that because for me, what how I think of it is, it's something you said earlier about gravity, right? Um, law of attraction is always working in the background, whether you believe it or not. Just like whether you believe in gravity or not, it's happening. So what you're saying is when we're creating by default, if we're not, it's almost like living, um, I call it autopilot, like living on that hamster wheel that you're just going through the same routines day in, day in, but you're not existing in your own life. And, and that's yeah. what I feel you are describing, right? There's no conscious choice, no conscious decisions. It's almost like everything's rote. Yes. Um, yeah, I can feel that because I, you and I have both been there, haven't we, my friend? <laughs> we have <laughs> and that's the beautiful part um for everyone listening listen i i was a pusher chaser striver in my 30s until it cost me my health at 40 um karen knows firsthand of you know being type a because she had this amazing corporate career but she lost herself in it so listen we're speaking from experience here Mm -hmm. We're not speaking from some pedestal of, hey, we're going to talk about law of attraction today. No, we lived it. We've transformed our lives, our mindsets. And that's why I'm, I wanted Karen here today, because I believe that the ones who have had those personal experience makes their teachings, makes their wisdom so much deeper because they're, they're teaching from their truth. So I just wanted to put that out there before we go to our next break, because um like you said, it's like, I think it's fun if we can consciously create our life, like map it out on vision boards, get it in our energy field. And we're going to talk more about that in a, when we come back from a break, Cameron, okay? That sounds great. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. Again, I want you to visit KarenShireCoaching.com. And a reminder, Shire is spelled S-H-I-E-R. So KarenShireCoaching.com. We'll be back in a moment. Are you ready to make the second half of your life the best half of your life, my midlife friend? Living a life full of happiness, abundance, and success is possible when you learn strategies to soothe your inner critic, honor your inner wisdom, and that support you to co-create your life from a place of joy and possibility. Don't walk the journey alone. Midlife Transformation Guide, Master Certified Law of Attraction Coach, and Certified Desire Factor Coach, Karen Shire, will passionately support you to uncover and release what no longer lights you up, so you can go from feeling stuck, stressed, and unfulfilled, to feeling free, empowered, and eager for the next chapter of your life. Learn more at KarenShireCoaching.com and schedule a complimentary discovery call today. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Welcome back, my friends. I am so glad that you have chosen to circle up with me and my special guest, Desire Factor and Law of Attraction Life Coach and Midlife Transformation Guide, Karen Shire. So let's talk a little bit more about consciously creating your life. And for those who are listening, um, just drop into your body for a moment because you'll feel the difference of consciously creating or living on autopilot or the hamster wheel, whatever vision helps you. So what are the, some of the ways that you would help a client identify what they want in that life they desire? I think for me, one of the first things that I, that I teach on is there's really three steps, three beginning steps. Now, we can, of course, go into each of these really deeply, but there's three steps to just begin consciously attracting what you want in your life. And I think this is a really good springboard for people that want to play with the law of attraction and work with the law of attraction in a very conscious way. 
and the first thing we've talked about a little bit already, but the, the first key is that everything's energy and we all vibrate at a higher or a lower frequency. Everything around us vibrates at a frequency. We learned about this in quantum physics in high school. And so um, just really understanding that everything is energy, everything puts off a vibration and you put off a vibration and anything that you put off uh, in your thoughts and words and experience and things are the same vibrations you're going to get back to you. You're going to attract the same kind of person, the same kind of relationship, the same kind of um, good or bad things in your life based on where your energy frequency is vibrating. We all know those people that, let's say you go to a Christmas party and there's that one person in the room that just seems to have this aura around them. Everybody loves to talk to them. Everybody loves to um, be in their, in their circle, if you will. That's the person that has the light in them. That's the person in, that you, know, you aspire to be that person that's just always got a smile on their face and always, you know, has, makes you feel good when you're around them. That person is vibrating at a really high frequency and that's what they're putting off it out to their, out in their world. Um, I also like a classic example in law of attraction is to think of a radio dial. And when I give the, I like the example of, think of AM 54, station is talk radio and talk radio is at a lower vibration it, it kind of represents those lower level emotions that we talked about earlier and let's say you are going to work every day and you turn your car on and you're, you're in you turn on your radio and you're listening to am 54 talk radio every day one day you get up and you're you're thinking oh my goodness i would really love some classic rock and classic rocks on 106.5. Well, there's no amount of wishing or hoping that you can do. If you're tuned into the frequency of AM 54, you're never going to hear Bob Seeger on AM 54, right? So what we need to do is we need to turn up the dial. We need to physically turn up our own frequency, our own dial, physically turn up our emotions and our feelings so that we can tune in to that different FM radio station. Like a radio dial, we need to change the channel if we wanna hear something new. So that's really, really the first step is everything is energy. The, the second thing I teach is also about focusing your awareness. Again, we talked about, are you creating by default? Are you creating consciously? Really, really focusing, you know, be that light in the room be that person everybody wants to be around or whatever it is for you live in your state of state of joy um so focusing your awareness getting really clear on that and i think most importantly the the third step is really the action step and that would be to live your life consciously and you know words have infinite power so it's about the words we speak. It's about the thoughts we think, the beliefs and perspectives and expectations that we have. It's about the feelings and the emotions that we're feeling in any moment. And then it's about the actions, the inspired actions that we take or we don't take. So I, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that there, there's, like many of us, there's several points in my life where big things happened and not, not great things, bad things happened. And I look back at those things with curiosity now, and I don't beat myself up about them, but I look at them with curiosity and say, okay, how did I create that in my life? And I look back to where I was at that time and think about the words I was saying at the time, the thoughts I was thinking at that time, you know, what kind of perspectives did I have? Um, and when I look at those items, those, those times in my life that were hard, and I get curious about them. Instead of beating myself up or feeling angry or feeling guilty, I get curious. And then I look at the gift. I look at the gift that that bad time brought me. And sometimes it's really hard to think of a gift when, it, when it's a really bad situation. But you know, the one thing I always fall back on is 
the gift that I generally learn, if I can't find anything else, is the fact that I know that I created that situation because I wasn't following my intuition. I wasn't following my gut and in, gut instinct at that time. So I know now going forward, being more consciously aware of everything, like you, Linda, I, I follow what my heart says to do, whether it comes to my business or everyday interactions. If something doesn't feel good, I know it's not good for me and it's a no. And if something does feel good, then I'm, I'm going to take inspired actions and follow it through. It's just about living life consciously. Yeah, I love that. And I love the strategies that you share too. And I think inspired action is, is key mm -hmm. because when I first learned about law of attraction, I thought I'm just going to say my affirmations over and over again. And where is this thing I keep waiting for? Because I thought I will just shift my vibration. I will say my affirmations. And I realized that the source, the energy, the divine, whatever word you want to go is waiting for us to meet it halfway. We yes. can't say we want something or desire something. Um, I'll say abundance, right? Um, there's so many topics, health. Um, we can't say in words we want something. We can't affirm and say we want something, but all our actions show the opposite. That's incongruency. And the divine can't read through it, that energy. It's like, well, you're saying one thing, but your energy is what I read and your energy is incongruent. Um, have you found that for yourself too? Absolutely. It, it, we can we can say it all we want, but unless our whole body, our whole being is vibrating in that way and, and you know, we're standing in our truth, it's, it, the universe, we have split energy. It's, it's kind of like we have one foot in one world and one foot in the other, I guess. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. I resonate with that. Yeah. And that's and that it took me a long time to go, oh, I'm supposed to do the work. This isn't. It isn't like a magical formula where you wave a wand. It's this, that's why it's called co-creation mm -hmm. too. You know, you're working with, not, you know, being um, the ego mind going in. I want this in my life by this date, which believe me, I tried, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, and that was when I was trying to micromanage the divine, right? Like my way, I know, and this is what I want and what I desire. And I would like it delivered in this package by this day, that was what I mean by micromanaging the divine. Now I just, it's like a dance, isn't it? Don't you think, Cameron? It's like you read your energy, you adjust the steps on the dance floor with the divine or with the energy of law of attraction. And it's almost like it, it becomes this flow in life instead of pushing in life. I think it's fun. Absolutely. And what you just described when we're because I'm the, I was the same way. I would put all these limitations. They ended up being limitations. In my mind, it was, I want it by this date and I want it to be this thing. The universe probably had something so much better in mind for me. And I was just limiting my own reality. And, oh, yeah. you know, so I'm glad you brought that up because it's so many of us, especially type my type A personality, I found that for me, it was get it off my list and do this and do that. And I want it by this date. Um, and then judging yourself when it didn't happen or getting yes. that divine in law of attraction, like this doesn't work. No, you were in trust and allowing and flow. I don't mean you personally, Kevin, but when we do that, we're not in trust, alignment and flow, which is required if you want to be in the energy of those high vibrations. You can't control um life that's an illusion that i used to have too so i can i relate here and i really relate <laughs> oh i yes and one other thing i'd like to add too is yeah. when we talk about inspired actions when we're when we get that little nugget that it little in next step in our brain that says you know here's your next step here's what you need to do and it feels really good take the inspired action and do it whether you it, whether it makes logical sense to you or not that little nugget is coming from the divine and you wouldn't get that thought or that idea if you didn't have it inside you to do and oh yeah i love what, that one. yeah and what happens if we don't take inspired action in those moments that energy just fizzes away so if i don't know if you've ever noticed that where you get this idea and 
you're like feeling really good about it. And then of course the inner critic starts saying, well, that's dumb and you shouldn't do that. And who are you to do that? So you let it go and you don't take inspired action. A day or two later, you're probably have forgotten that little nugget of information that was an inspired exactly. action you could have taken. So be conscious of those. Think about those and go, oh, where's that coming from? Get curious. And I, and I love that you talked on, um, talk, just touched on the inner critic because we're going to take our final break and come back for the last segment. And I want to talk about that because I think it's one of the biggest sabotages of the law of attraction. It comes from within us and we don't even know it's playing in the background because it's been so ingrained in us. So yeah. we're going to be back in a moment. And we're going to be talking about the inner critic and how it could be sabotaging what you are attracting and creating in your life. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. I am with Karen Shire. You can learn more at KarenShireCoaching.com. And just a reminder, Shire is spelled S-H-I-E-R. We'll be back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're in the final segment of the show, and we're gonna, we're gonna close with some some juiciness. Um, Karen does a lot of teaching, and it's really resonating with I know my Aspire Mag community because women are like, ah, shit, she can see me. She knows what's <laughs> going on in in my mind. And we're talking about the inner critic and how it can sabotage not only your law of attraction co-creation, um, but also your inner peace, your abundance, all of it. So Karen, please speak to that. Yes, the, the, the good old little inner critic, that little voice or ego, ego voice in our head. It's, it's that one that keeps us stuck. It's, it's those, anytime you hear those little thoughts in your head, you know, you're not good enough. Who are you to do this? And you know, that's, that's a bad idea. Or those, those, those little disempowering thoughts that don't feel good are coming from that area of your brain. It's your, it's your inner critic. It's your ego mind. Um, and it's, it's not doing you any favors. And it, it did favors in the past for you because the, the, the inner critic is that part of your brain. It's the not to go too deep into that whole conversation, but it's that part of your brain that we learn certain things based on our beliefs, based on what our parents and our teachers and our grandparents and ancestors taught us through the years. Um, these things in order to keep us in a safe space. And so what happens is our brain is likes the status quo. It likes us to be safe in our little box. And so we hear those things like, I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, and, and so forth. And so anytime that we listen to and take action on what the inner critic is whispering for us, we're, we're, we're stuck in lack. We're not, we're not going to grow out of that. So what we need to do is and understand that when we're in a state of lack, we're, we're not focusing on what we want. We're focusing on what we don't want. Our energy frequencies are lower. And that just means that unless I get myself out of that, I'm just going to keep attracting more of the same. Life's still going to be hard. It's still going to be harder than it needs to be. I may not be feeling joyful. Um, I need to just recognize that. And when I hear one of those thoughts, one of the best ways to think about that is, is that true for me now? That's a question I like to ask when I hear that little inner critic start chirping at me, trying to keep me in my comfort zone. I, I think about that and say, you know, is, is, is that true for me now? Is that belief that I had way back when I was a kid, is that true for me now? Um, and just really get curious and examine those things. I also like to give my inner critic a little name you know I might say oh I'll call him Charlie Charlie I hear you thank thanks for the information go lay down I got this it's that part of you that just wants to be heard and acknowledged it's a little part of your inner child that's trying to get your attention and so just acknowledge it give it a hug say I've got this we're going in a different direction and there's so much work to be done with the inner critic. I, I would say that's 
that's a really big one for most people is to learn how to deal with those thoughts, learn how to calm and soothe those thoughts. And so that you can start, uh, so that you can start hearing your inner wisdom more so that you can start hearing more of those little intuitional nudges that come to you. Yeah, and, and I can really relate too because it's the inner critic and that work that I did was the deepest work I had taken on in my personal development journey. You know what I mean? Because it was so ingrained that that's the voice I listened to because, you know, through a lifetime before I got on the spiritual path, I had become disconnected from my inner wisdom, my truth because mm -hmm. of life, right? So yep. the inner critic was the lead voice. It's the only voice I knew. And ladies, just in case you're wondering, like the inner critic could be that one, like, oh, what are you even thinking of doing that? What are you talking about? You can't do that. Why would you leave your job? You know, it's the one that makes you yes. feel less than. Yes. And it's the only voice I knew, Kim. And so I remember having to do, I didn't know how to label it. Like we now label it as inner critic. Mine's negative Nelly. I have no <laughs> idea, ladies, why I picked Nelly. No offense. I don't know what, where that came from. Well, I'm like Karen, I gave it a name because everything Karen said really resonates because I used to try to run from the inner critic. And what happens when you run? It chases you. Mm -hmm. It gets bigger and scarier. And so I love what you said that you talk to yours and say, it's okay, I hear you. And I'll go, I like what you said, go lay down, like step away. I think that's so powerful. Um, learning to embrace the inner critic so that it, that's a soothing technique in its own it sure is it sure is and i also will a lot of times depending on what it is if i feel a sadness or whatever i know and i know it's a piece you know i know it's an inner child it's a piece of me when i was six or eight or whatever it is i envision myself getting you know getting down on my on my knees at that child's height giving her a hug talking her through it and just saying, you know what, thank you for the information, but here's what we're going to do together now. And I want you to come with me and, and just do those techniques to really help you soothe those parts of you that are just, that are just looking to looking, you know, for, um, acknowledgement. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you, it's one of the best gifts you will give yourself ladies is to work with your inner critic um you know that's there is nothing wrong with you it's just we pick up programming from all of our lives and sometimes that voice becomes louder than the truth of who we are and our job is everything that karen just said nurture it build a relationship with it listen and i promise you just from my own experience and you heard karen's experience that that voice will no longer be the prominent one. It will always be there. You're, you're in the human body. It's going to be there, but it will not be as prominent as it is now. Right. And, um, I, I think that's the number one thing I want to guide women to understand. And I also want to make sure that I have time to share a special gift that Karen has for you. Um, Karen has the three ways to soothe your inner critic so that you can hear your inner wisdom and it's a digital e-guide and it's about making the second half of your life the best half of your life and in the guide you'll learn three ways to soothe your inner critic so that you can hear your intuition and so you can consciously create your life everything we're talking about today right instead of creating it by default and along with this um powerful strategies, you're going to also receive a powerful two-part journaling process to guide you to living the joy-filled, aligned life you desire. So I want you to go to KarenShireCoaching.com and you will see the messaging there for you to download that free guide right to your computer. And this is when it calls for taking inspired action. Don't just download it open it, print it, and take inspired action. Do the journaling processes. Start integrating the three ways of soothing your inner critic into your, your own practice. And Kevin, I wanted to say um, to thank you, thank you for sharing that with my audience. Oh, thank you, Linda. This has been really fun. And thank you so much. I'm so glad our paths have crossed. It's It's just 
you do such wonderful work in the world and I'm so glad to be a little part of it. Well, uh, it's me, my friend, that's honored because I've been doing this show for seven years and I just love and am so passionate about bringing women on who are transforming others' lives with their sacred offerings and gifts. So I feel like it's my job, it's my role, like I have got to get these messages out there because there's someone listening right now, Karen, who's saying, oh my God, I needed this conversation. And I truly, truly believe that, that there are people that are waiting for our sacred offerings, gifts, messages. So thank you for standing up, showing up and continuing to spread your light in the world. I love you, my friend. I love you too. Thank you so much, Linda. You're welcome. And I want to invite everyone one more time, go to KarenShireCoaching.com, grab that um, free inner, yeah, that free guide called Three Ways to Soothe Your Inner Critic. Check out her blog, check out her Facebook community, and stay connected with Karen. And that is KarenShireCoaching.com. And just a reminder, Shire is spelled S-H-I-E-R. And until next time, my friends, choose love, Choose joy and choose happiness. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.